This is the story of the darkest times of my life. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. I usually make videos about Japanese culture or trending news in Japan. But today, I want to tell you a story of my own life. I am a Japanese man who used to live in Michigan, America for six years. So I have many people asking me this question Did you like Japan or America more? This video will be an answer to this question. It is actually a pretty horrifying story after coming back from America to Japan. First, I would like to talk about how I spent my six years in America. I went to Michigan, America for six years from five to 11 years old due to my father's job. He used to work in the car industry. To make a very long story short, I enjoyed almost every single day of my life in America. I had a lot of nice friends doing sleepovers and playing a lot of video games. There were some mean kids that made fun of my slanted eyes, but that's about it. I even loved going to school. There's a funny story when my mother helped me to make my first email address when I was 10 years old. I was having a hard time deciding what my password should be. And then my mother told me, choose something that you love. And then the first thing that came to my mind was school. So yes, that was what my password was for more than 10 years. I was probably the first person on earth to be conscious about information security. I was so excited to go to school every day. And I still remember that happy feeling when I stepped into my classroom. I did high fives my classmates as I took a seat in my chair. Sadly, when I was 11 years old, it was time for me to go home. My teachers at school skipped a whole class for my surprise farewell party. My dance class and my violin teacher did so for me too. I still remember the big and colorful cakes, the message cards everyone wrote for me, all the hugs and tears as if it was yesterday. Although I felt very lonely and sad to leave Michigan, I had some anticipation in my heart. Because my Japanese parents told me that I'm finally going home to my own country. At this point, I didn't remember anything about living in Japan because I was so young before coming to America. So I was excited to starting a new and fun life in my homeland. But this was a big mistake. I started living in Hiroshima as a fifth grade student in elementary school. And it didn't take a month for me to become a target of severe bullying and violence. Every day, I would have dust cloths that are used to clean the toilet filled in my desk. Someone would pull my chair from behind so that I would fall to the floor when everyone is quietly taking class. Someone would steal my shoes so that I had to walk home in my socks. Some of the boys would grab me by the neck and drag me along a concrete wall when I was going home from school. The police stopped me to ask why my legs were bleeding so much. A group of boys would rip my clothes off, pin me to the ground, slapping my back one by one to see who can leave the biggest scar. And the worst part of all was that I was called a virus. That is, if someone would talk or breathe the same air around me, they would become a weird American like me. My colorful and happy images of school shattered instantly, and my days all turned into a Hong Kong view. I couldn't sleep at night, and I would throw up my breakfast every day before heading to school. I looked up ways to commit suicide on the internet and seriously thought that it would be a lot easier to die than to keep going. These are pictures of me during these days. This may be hard to believe, but I actually recall myself smiling in these pictures. Now you might be thinking, 
How could the life of a boy that had so many friends and enjoyed school every day possibly change into a living hell? It is because how the schools teach their students in both countries are very different. It's not an exaggeration that America and Japan teach their students completely opposite things. In America, I was taught to always have my own opinion and the courage to state it in front of everyone. I took a lot of speech classes and was encouraged to always raise my hand in class. If someone wouldn't share their thoughts, they would be thought as lazy. In Japan, it is completely the opposite. You never say your own opinions. You don't raise your hands unless you're forced to. And the top priority is to stay quiet and blend in. The teachers don't care if their students are not participating in class because all that matters is their test scores and if they can enroll in a good school. My attitude in the Japanese school was a complete taboo. My classmates attacked and slandered me because I stood out too much and wasn't normal. I was able to overcome the bullying because of two things, my mother's word and my own bravery. There was a week I couldn't go to school because I was too scared to. I insisted that I was sick and wouldn't leave my bed. I remember my mother would sit beside me and talk to me every day. Aren't you frustrated? I am at least. You are doing what you should and those kids in your school are pulling you down. I can't stand that you are going to be the one to take damage from not going to school. My mother also had the experience of being bullied in her childhood as shadow and black because her skin was a little tanned than others. My feelings of fear gradually turned into rebelliousness from my mother's voice. Thanks to my mother, I only needed a week to get back on track. One day, after I started going to school again, the incident happened. It was break time between classes, and I was sitting at my desk when there were two boys who were throwing a dust cloth used for wiping the floor across the classroom. Eventually, one of the boys threw the dust cloth on my head on purpose. With a big smile on his face, he ran to me and said, What a big, filthy piece of garbage. I should use this dust cloth to make it clean. And he started to wipe my face and clothes with the dirty piece of cloth that had stains from cleaning the toilet and smelled like rotten eggs. As my classmates laughed at me, getting my face and clothes all wiped with this filthy piece of cloth, all the anger and frustration that had been pressing down on myself blew up like a volcano. I stood up, knocking down my chair, and I punched this boy right in his stomach. He fell to the floor and I ran out of the classroom. I still remember that moment when the whole class froze and my classmates laughter turned into complete silence. The next day, there was an emergency meeting held to discuss this incident and his and my mother's came to talk with our teacher. I know now that relying on violence is not a good way to solve a problem at all. But from that day on, no one came up to bully me anymore. I still had difficulties engaging with other students until the end of middle school when I was 15 years old. But it all ended when I got into high school. I went to Funaidi High School where there was an international communication course. It was a course where we studied more English and took second language classes. We were even lucky enough to travel to Canada, Germany, and Austria. I had three other returnees in my class, and everyone was very open-minded. I returned to my bright self, and I'm very thankful for my friends in high school for this. Thanks, Kazu. Now, my experience of being bullied has not affected me in a negative way. I have no fear of engaging with people at all. In fact, I've been working in the customer service industry all my life. I'm actually thankful for the experience now because I can understand the feeling of those who have had the same experience. 
or are suffering now. I feel I have more compassion towards them. But it is scary how when I take my two-year-old daughter to play at a playground and I see a group of small kids, my memories of horror will flash back. I still feel a little uncomfortable or at worst times feel nausea. Although I was one of the lucky ones that survived this tragic experience, many kids in Japan do not. In 2019, the number of reported bullying incidents was more than 610,000, which was the most reported ever. The number has been growing for six years. The number of elementary and junior high school students who have been absent for 30 days or more increased by 10.2% to 181,272, increasing for the seventh consecutive year. And the police reported the suicide death of 382 elementary and junior high school students. Sadly, suicide is the most common cause of death in the age group between the ages of 15 to 39, surpassing illnesses such as cancer and accidents. According to the data from WHO, Japan is the only developed country where suicide is the leading cause of death among the younger generation. Suicide among young people is becoming more and more serious. So there are actually a lot more kids out there who are enduring a worse environment than what I have experienced. I know that eliminating bullying completely is almost impossible, but I hope there will be a system to support and stand side by side with the minority. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you thought this kind of video of me talking about my own experience is interesting to watch, please let me know in the comments below. And my goal is to achieve 10,000 subscribers by July 2021, so your help would mean a lot. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.